Yeah, I think it is. So, hi, good evening, Nikita. How are you? Doing good. How are you? Good evening. I'm good. Thank you. Thank you for taking out this uh, time for us and, uh, you know, um, having this brief interaction with us. So what we're going to do sure. in the course of uh, this conversation is just want to get to know you a little better, uh, get a feel of how was the prep journey for you, both your CAT preparation as well as uh, the piece in terms of the GDPI process. Probably something in terms of prep zone, how we could have added to you, who told you about it, etc. And then uh, how big is an SPJ IMR convert for you? By the way, many, many yeah. congratulations on that. Thank and you so much. If there is, you know, any pearls of wisdom for people who are incoming, probably who are either writing CAT this year or are struggling with their interview prep, if there's something that, you know, you would want to let these guys know, we okay. would love to uh, hear from you. Yeah, sure. sounds good. Sure, we'll keep sure, it absolutely, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely informal. So just relax. It's not an interview for a change. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, just want to hear your story and the way it has panned out for you. So um, yeah. just to begin with, Nikita, uh, you know, give us a sense of probably what's the journey been for you and how did CAN yeah. come in this picture and why did you think that, you know, this is an attempt you would want to give in? Yeah, yeah, sure. So, you know, this was the second attempt for me, uh, second attempt of CAD for me. And I had previously given CAD in 2020. I am not a person uh, who would eat, breathe and sleep over cat. Like when people used to do it since undergrad, I've come across people who, you know, I think there's a lag, but okay. Yeah. yeah uh, I, so who, yeah, yeah. So people who, who start their prep since undergraduation, I knew that I had to do a higher education, but was not very sure about business administration. So in my first attempt, I clearly, if, I mean, I remember that I could not score, uh, uh, I, I could not clear the cutoff for verbal section and uh, the score, I, I landed onto 90 percentile around that. And uh, because of a good score on in DILR and uh, maths, a uh, quant section. So uh, for me, I, you know, I wanted to explore a bit and I shifted to GMAT. And of course, as we all know that, you know, GMAT has a much more rigorous uh, verbal section. So I thought, okay, maybe preparing for GMAT would be a much more better uh, stake or shot for me. So I went ahead for GMAT, did not score very well in that as well. And I gave GMAT in 2021 October, like a month before uh, CAT. And, you know, CAT for me, CAT 2021 for me was also on the fly. So I was like, uh, you know, I did not even think about uh, clearing cutoff or anything. I was not waiting for the results or anything for that matter. But uh, eventually I had started uh, the second round of prep for GMAT. And ultimately when the results came out, I think... For SPJIMR, uh, I had applied, of course, and the results came out in December. I got selected for a profile-based call. So um, for me, it was really unexpected. And the day I saw the mail, I, I was pretty sure that I had to get into, you know, kind of state-of-the-art uh, like platform where I could work on my profile and everything and then uh, like deliver what the interviewers would want so prep zone came from that area and one of my friends uh, she was a previous probably student of prep zone she suggested me to go ahead with prep zone like it it provides a very a grand uh, grand uh, you know platform to prepare on your profile everything uh, current affairs and everything so yeah so that is how I, you know, started off with prep zone because of two and a half plus years of experience. I got calls from uh, IAMs as well at a lower percentile level. Uh, my percentile is uh, 92.57. So uh, even though it's less, I, I, you know, did not let it hamper my interview process. And maybe I just had confidence in me and tried to deliver my profile to the interviewers. So 
that is how my prep zone journey start started so yeah i think after entering prep zone it was like a whole new world to, for me so you know uh, it's like it was kind of uh, i revised ece like in a month's time uh, i am an ece graduate so ece for me like is a very distant thing which i would never go and touch upon and uh, i met such wonderful mentors out here so it was like a very 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 significant and yeah steep learning curve for me in prep zone so it's just give it us to the whole team <laughs> thank you <laughs> um just uh, want to kind of touch upon this one a little further because i think um a lot of us when we kind of go for you know cat preparation or we go for classes like this we typically go with big brands and what comes yeah. to mind typically is probably a courier launcher or a times or an ims correct and in that kind of uh, a segment where you know we just starting off at prep zone and it's just uh, you know we've just got it all together etc uh what really was you know that trigger for you that kind of got you interested or got you you know um that put us in consideration said that you know you thought that you know let's let's give prep zone a, a try in terms of getting your uh, gdpi process in place so for me i think you know uh, two factors played a major major role in selecting prep zone first and foremost of course my my friends who were a part of prep zone and who became ultimately who ventured into big b schools successfully so i was like inspired from them they suggested me to get into prep zone second i of course uh, prep zone being a new a platform or maybe uh, uh, a newbie in this area i would say there's a whole new concept which they would come up with unlike the existing you know players in the market so i think these two made me go ahead with prep zone and made me incline towards prep zone a bit so yeah makes sense um and also uh, i think you mentioned that the percentile probably was a little lower in cat and uh, you know you got a couple couple of im calls also because of your work profile and the way the profile has shaped up but uh, given that sp gen was kind of your best shot um correct how was the two months where you prepped you know what all is it that you covered uh, what sort of um, we we heard about the ec story but what else uh, did you keep in mind while you know you were prepping and gearing up for the spj interview yeah sure so you know um for uh, so uh, when i entered i knew that okay there was group interview rounds for spj and you were the first mentor who reviewed my profile i was like so thankful about the form b part of spj mir so uh starting from the form review moving ahead with the current affair section reviewing revising current affair section largely and going along with the mock mock gi rounds so i took three mock gi rounds so uh thanks to abhyankar karan sir prashant sir uh i mean i could uh, i could you know uh, i got the blueprint of how how i have to inculcate whatever i have in my bucket and in front of the uh, panelists in a structured format so for me structuring everything was a major thing and i so i mean with the help of prep zone i i could work upon all of the small small nitty gritties of my profile which i would have probably not reviewed alone or something so i so i got a cohort of people uh, like minded people i could review with them uh, if at all i have a similar level of profile anything so i think for prep zone it, it, i mean it provided a grand it, it has a grand grand success uh, uh, behind all of this so yeah uh, and now we'll want to kind of delve a little deeper into the day uh i mean you had okay. uh, you know your spj experience probably in terms of 
if you recollect what sort of questions came your way, what was expected of answers, how did your G1 you know, work out, then you progress to a G2. And also if you know there was any sort of thing which you felt that probably this was something that you, know, you had done earlier in your mocks and that came to play. So just a kind of a brief um, view around how yes. the interview was from you. I mean, we all hear a lot of interview ex uh, experiences which are pre pretty much transcripts, but hearing it out loud, I think would be a little different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So, uh, you know, uh, GI1, we always know that GI1 is more about your technical part of uh, your profile. So uh, I have experience on the cloud infrastructure. And uh, um, when I joined, uh, my specialization, which I have selected is even information management. So when I joined PrepZone, you know, uh, I did not know what to highlight in my interview and in, in, on, in my profile. So uh, all the mentors, they suggested, they told me the structure, how to proceed with it. Uh, for, for the GI one, they started off with asking about my introduction. I, of course, highlighted upon uh, cloud infrastructure. I'm working on carbon footprint. I'm working with the Pride and Allies community in my organization. So all of these points like just added up on the uh, D-Day. And, uh, and of course, as I had you know kind of prepped upon it in my GI, so it helped me a lot. So um, yeah, these uh, in GI one revolved around the questions were majorly upon the use cases of cloud infrastructure. What am I working on carbon footprint? How am I dealing with people, making people aware, so on and so forth. So uh, for the first part, it was pretty chill, and I knew that okay, my panelists were impressed like with my profile. Second interview went a bit, you know. Uh, on the tangent side of uh, my profile. So, uh, so I had prepared for the second GI as well, but uh, I think uh, it was not up to the mark, which it was not one of my best interview, which where would I, where I would have delivered. So uh, they basically gave me, but yeah, I, I performed up to my limit and yeah, I, I you know, it's, it's more about, thinking and perspective in the second second group interview rather than uh, anything else so being confident and delivering is what i feel is uh, the ultimate aim so they are searching for managers and everything so yeah uh, ultimately it helped so of course uh, that randomness was already prepared i was prepared for that again and from my mock interviews so I could deal with it in the GI2. The questions revolved around, you know, uh, certain scenarios, like if you were you are on an island, an island, what would you do? How would you interact with people and so on and so forth? So yeah, I think, and you know, it was a stress interview for me. So mm. uh, questions on each and every statement, each word, whatever you're speaking, so sort of that. So I think, again, I had a preparation via prep zone. So it went well, it went pretty well. And also, I think one of the things that a lot of people do undermine or are very scared of is the personal section. And, you know, you kind of also mentioned that a lot of these uh, colleges have very, very descriptive forms where they expect you to write long answers and, you know, their incidents, their situations. Um, how important do you think uh, is guidance or mentoring when you know you put down these answers into perspective hugely i mean from uh, my experience of these two and a half months you know there's a huge uh, you want to deliver i i've been through multiple interviews where i've underperformed i have over i mean i've performed well so with the underperformance i know that okay there's so much to talk about the questions might come in any direction but you have to understand like what you want to deliver upon similarly while writing even in the writing section you have to deal with uh, you know, questions coming around from any and every section. So you have, there are certain frameworks to be followed, which of course, you know, uh, these platforms like in prep zone, I learned that, okay, there's a pestle framework, there is star framework, which we have to follow. So um, like 
I feel guidance along these lines is a huge, huge benefit hmm. for me. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Um, and also, I think uh, we also would love to know from you, how do you find time or how did you manage your work calendar, your personal calendar to ensure that you took out time for this interview prep? I'm sorry, I think you're on mute. Yeah, okay. Yeah, uh, did my question come through? No, 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 I think I got disconnected. Oh. So I uh, just wanted to also get a sense of, you know, how did you manage because there's work on one front, there are of course other personal engagements also that you have to take care of. So how do you kind of take all of this together and ensure that you're doing justice to the three fronts? You know, so the best part for me, which I like about PrepZone, I don't know what, you know, other uh, institutes are doing for uh, GI and PI prep, but for me, it was Discord, okay? I don't know if this is the first time you're exploring it, but for me, Discord was like uh, a blessing in disguise. So, you know, I would keep my, um, my working laptop and my... Uh, this a uh, personal laptop in front and I'm not a mobile person okay like I would read articles on mobile or something I don't prefer that so for me uh, working on laptop going through discord was like just amazing so I could just surf over whatever I could search anything uh, any word which I'm missing anything I can download I can reach out to people interact chat and so on and so forth so you know, parallelly with work, of course, over two years of time, I kind of, yeah, of course, my, my work is, uh, of course, I cannot say it's uh, easy to deal with both of these uh, parallelly. But uh, yeah, we do find time out. And I think uh, it was, uh, uh, Discord has helped me a lot, like learning, studying mm. parallelly uh, with my work, in my working hours. So, so pretty great that's i think that's an interesting insight and yeah we are kind of you know dabbling with it for the first time so okay definitely we'll take it forward um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a very yeah. interesting for me and now i think just we want to get a sense of so how is it converting sp is it still sunk in uh what are you going through these days in terms of you know your emotions feelings um what what is it that you know it's just making it sound great and brilliant I think it will take some time to sink in. Um, and of course, uh, you know, success lasts for some days, but then eventually we have to get over it and kind of face the future. So I have to prepare for the next round. So I think, you know, until it sinks in, maybe uh, I'll yeah of course uh, maybe relax a bit but then uh, having met mentors like you having you know so I would like to say that you know these one and a half months or two months of preparation has kind of made my routine in such a manner that even after interview I feel that I'm still aligned to that routine so uh, even after you know even after going getting over with all my calls and everything, I'm still, you know, going with all the current affairs and all of that going on in the world. So yeah, for me, I think, um, uh, fine, S I've converted SPGen that that's one point, but yeah, we have to move on. So I think, yeah, uh, I've had a great learning from prep zone. So it is helping and uh, for sure, connecting with mentors, uh, learning from them and keeping up with with whatever S, like SP Gen or business school has to offer to me would be uh, great and I'm just looking forward to it. Wishing all the best and uh, we hope that this current affairs is something that you carry forward even going uh, into the school. I know times will be rigorous yeah, yeah. and you probably won't have time to breathe but that's uh, another challenging and exciting story. Uh, then Nikita, just to end with, uh, you know, Thank we you. want you to kind of give us a sense of, and, you know, people who are probably going to listen to this or watch it sometime, what are, you know, two or three key takeaways that they should keep in mind or, you know, they should be wary of while either prepping for the exam or the process in terms of the GDPI, 
what is it that mm-hmm. you think that you know these are two or three things that people should be mindful of yeah okay so i think um mentors and a cohort to to you know prepare with it's it's a major major pointer in any to face any kind of competitive exam so i kind of lack this uh this this cohort of people i i i not regret but i feel that okay if i would have maybe entered such platform a bit early uh things might have been different so i think the major thing is about the uh, cohort and the mentors to guide you and um, i think confidence like believing in yourself is is something to look up to and the most important point is not overthinking i i feel that people of our age you know we overthink a lot we tend to overthink a lot so yeah overthinking is something which i would say would kill any and every dream of yours so stop overthinking and you know try to go ahead with whatever you want to do so i i think the overthinking is definitely the one we all can resonate with uh then yeah, yeah, you create yeah. absolutely hypothetical situations in our head and then find ways around it exactly yeah great uh, great i think nikita this has been wonderful and i think the smile on your face is telling us a lot even if the words aren't thank you and uh, <laughs> yeah, absolutely you. wishing you the very best for all that comes your way and uh, all i can say is that sp jain is lucky to have a individual like you walk in their doors and i'm sure you will bring so much more not to yourself but also to the college thank you thank you so much thank you so much thank you so much <laughs>